So I'm not sure if this video is going to focus on two players or just one. I know there's one guy in particular that I do want to talk about, but if we end up talking about somebody else, then okay, I guess I'm going to have to title and thumbnail the video in a different way. Let's talk about the New York Rangers and some players they might potentially see value in on the Vancouver Canucks and elsewhere. So, firstly, when it comes to the Rangers and Vancouver, there was a trade rumor going around that J.T. Miller, Vancouver Canucks forward and current protocol absentee, was indeed on the radar, and that the Rangers were all over this guy. We already made a video about that, and long story short, Miller was a former Rangers draftee who went to Tampa, who went to Vancouver, who was doing very well in Vancouver, better in Vancouver than he has ever done in any other organization before, and because his contract expires next year, and because the Canucks are kind of in a difficult spot, there are rumors suggesting that Miller could be on the block, or that teams are, at the very least, calling about JT Miller. Saravelli said that New York is all over him, but Rick Dollywall on Donnie and Dolly earlier this week said that some other players are also on the Rangers' radar, from Vancouver specifically. Here's the quote on an Instagram page that kind of just summarizes it. I'm only using this as a source because it's got the quote of what Dolly Wall says. Miller and Luke Shen's name are going to pop up a lot. The Rangers' rumor from yesterday was that they're after JT Miller. I was told, Dolly Wall says, last night, the Rangers also could be interested in Luke Shen. You're going to hear a ton of stuff about those guys. And so... When you think about the Rangers and the Vancouver Canucks, not only are you supposed to think about JT Miller, but Luke Shen's name has now entered the conversation too. And this is kind of why at the beginning of the video I prefaced it by saying I'm not too sure if we're going to talk about two players because there are rumors going around that the Rangers are actually involved in trade talks for other defensemen, particularly Jacob Chitrin. If we don't get to that in this video, then we're going to have to make another video about that. But let's talk about, for now, Luke Shen and the New York Rangers. So, Shen, honestly, I love this guy. And honestly... The way that I appreciate Luke Shen on the ice is probably irrational, and I think a lot of Canucks fans kind of feel the same way, you know? There's a little bit of an irrational love that goes around for this player, and I'm going to go out there and try to explain why. Luke Shen, 32 years old, 6'2", 229, he's a right-handed defenseman, signed till 2023, making $850,000 a year. Chen has played 24 games for the Canucks this year, and he has 6 points. Honestly, that's a pretty good metric for Luke Chen because he was never really known as an offensive defenseman. He was always a shutdown guy. But when it comes to Luke Chen in Vancouver, this is his second stint with the team. He was initially acquired by the Canucks in 2018-19 in the Michael Delzato trade. During this season, he made his debut with the Anaheim Ducks, but he wasn't good enough to stick around. He eventually got sent down to the San Diego Gulls, where he spent the majority of his season over there. Eventually, getting acquired by Vancouver in the Delzato trade alongside of a draft pick, I believe, he made his way over to the Utica Comets, where he was a pretty good player. 5.7 games played, he made an impact on Utica, and the Vancouver Canucks rewarded him for it. Making his debut with Vancouver, he was placed onto a pairing with the brand new, up-and-coming, young star, Quinn Hughes. And he played 18 games in this position, where he was the Quinn Hughes linemate. And it was honestly kind of funny, because as we know, Quinn Hughes, his dad, was indeed an executive with the Toronto Maple Leafs back when Luke Shen was actually drafted. And so, Luke Shen actually knew about Quinn and Jack when they were little kids. Fast forward like 15 years later, and all of a sudden, Luke is playing on a pairing with that new Quinn Hughes, who has captivated Vancouver Canucks fans for the entire season leading up to that point. Quinn was very good right away, and Luke Shen played a very good part in just allowing Hughes to adapt to the NHL game, and a lot of Canucks fans were super grateful for it. It's why, after Luke Shen and his contract expired in 2019, they actually offered him a pretty decent amount of money to stick around. Shen, though, said no. He went to the Tampa Bay Lightning, where he signed a one-year minimum contract because, in his own words, he wanted to win a Stanley Cup after, in 2019, his brother Braden won with the St. Louis Blues. Now, not only did he win a Stanley Cup, but he actually won two. He stuck around with the Lightning for another season, got two Stanley Cup rings under his belt. He has now overtaken his younger brother Braden. And because he's kind of, you know, fulfilled his mission, he's done everything he wanted to do, he came back to Vancouver, signed a contract here, and now he's in the lineup consistently because the Canucks' defense is questionable at best. No Hamannick. He's been all over the place. I don't even know what's going on with Hamannick. So Luke has gotten a pretty good amount of playing time with the Canucks. As we said, 24 games played. 
And so, because there is this love for this guy, like, I appreciate Luke Shen so much for being the mentor that allowed Quinn Hughes to adapt his game to the NHL level, it does kind of sting to think about the idea of trading this guy, especially since, you know, he's cheap, he's only got two years, he's valuable at what he does, but when it comes to the way he plays, honestly, Luke Shen is not perfect. Like, he does do the good play once in a while, he does PK well, but... There are some moments once in a while where Luke Shen does a thing where you're like, oh, so that's why he was never able to break out into that number one defenseman that the Leafs wanted him to be back when they drafted him fifth overall in 08. Shen is good enough at what he does to the point where it actually is worth playing him, but as a guy who is 32 making less than a million dollars would indicate, he is definitely far from perfect. There are a few defensive lapses once in a while where it's like, okay, you didn't need to pass it there to that opponent, but okay, at least Quinn was there to recover and take it away. Okay, Luke, you didn't need to pinch there. There's a lane that's opened up now because you stepped up. Okay, at least Quinn Hughes is there to take it away. They're actually playing together again, which is very nice to see, but Luke Shen is a guy that... Honestly, as a depth piece, as a potential add to a Stanley Cup contender, could honestly be pretty okay. Now, when the Canucks acquired him initially, it was Michael Delzato for Shen and a 7th round pick. If he gets traded again to, let's say, a New York Rangers team, I think he could honestly fetch a little bit more than just a 7th round pick or a player of the caliber of Michael Delzato. I think if you're going out there as a Vancouver Canucks trying to sell high on Luke Shen, you're probably asking for a 4th or a 5th, maybe a 3rd if you're lucky. And of course, today Luke Shen is worth a lot more than he was two years ago, or three years ago, mind you, because he's got himself two Stanley Cup rings and the experience of playing on a Tampa Bay squad that did all the things that they did. It's very awesome to see Luke Shen go out there and redeem his career in this way, but now, as a trade ship for the Vancouver Canucks, it makes for another interesting chapter going forward. Shen also expressed his gratitude to the Vancouver Canucks back in 2019 when they called him up and played him in their lineup because he said that his career was pretty much down in the dumps, playing in San Diego, just consistently getting AHL time, not really finding any ways to break back into the NHL. And of course, if you're an AHL player, your ultimate goal is to play NHL games. And so for Luke Shen to break himself back into the NHL with Vancouver, he was really grateful about that when he talked about it three years ago. So I definitely do think that there is somewhat of a redemption here because you know, when you're on a team and you appreciate that team, you want to help that team out, not just on the ice, but off it as well. I get a little bit of an Alex Burroughs vibe from this situation, where Burroughs pretty much said, yeah, you can trade me because I'm going to help out the team by getting younger players, getting draft picks, and I'll go to a team that goes out there and maybe makes a cup final or something. Now, the Ottawa Senators did not do that when they acquired Burroughs. They made the third round, not the finals, but... There were indeed some pretty good redeeming things the Canucks got out of that trade, and I think maybe you could see somewhat of a similar situation here. I can't believe we spent eight minutes, though, talking about Luke Shen and a potential trade. Let's wrap this entire thing up not talking about Jacob Chitrin because I don't want to talk about a topic like that for two minutes only. So, if you're a Rangers fan, what is the most you would be willing to give up for a Luke Shen? At his best, he's a pretty good shutdown guy who can play in your third pair and get some pretty good PK time in there, too. He's probably best served playing bottom pairing, middle pairing minutes, and not really anything more because there are some defensive lapses more often than not with him than there are with other defensemen. He's not perfect, but he's good enough, I think, for any playoff team to go out there and use him in the bottom of their lineup, as well as with the experience he has on top of that. What is the price for a Luke Shen, in your opinion? Is it a fifth round pick, or a fourth, or a third? Is it a little bit more, because he actually does have another year on his contract after 2021-2022? He's only making $850,000 a year, so if you're able to actually get some solidified NHL minutes out of this guy, right away, there's a pretty good return on your investment. Canucks fans, what would you like to get for a Luke Shen? For me personally, because because he was a free agent acquisition, I would just be okay with anything. Literally anything would be good enough on this team. But, you know, we kind of do need to make sure we have defensemen to back up Luke Shen and enter the lineup in replacement of him. Maybe a Travis Hamanick comes back or whatever. It's been so strange keeping up with Travis Hamanick and seeing what that guy's up to, but... He hasn't been here for a while, it's why Luke Shen has been playing a lot, it's why we have Burroughs, it's why we have Hunt. I honestly do think Shen is better than Burroughs and Hunt, but... You know, there is a reason why Shen is the guy being targeted here and not those other two. So talk to me in the comments if you're a Rangers or a Canucks fan, all your thoughts about Luke Shen and the potential trade. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.